Hi, my name is Shimon Lawton and I'll be speaking to you today on a topic um, that most of us singles want to hear about. Um, we'll get a little bit more insight into it and it is um, on singleness, on relationships and what does really, what does the Bible say about it? Um, so my topic to today is called Single But Whole, um, adding the W, so W-H-O-L-E. So how do we remain whole um, and still single at the same time? And so today I just want to pour a little bit into that and what does that mean? I've been single for a while, so um, this has been something that I've walked through. It's not just something that I'm saying um, without having the experience of it. Um, I am still single and um, it's something that I've journeyed through. And so I want to bring a lot of um, practical examples of really how do we apply this and still remain whole at the same time. Um, a couple of friends and uh, myself have a joke around in our circle saying that a lot of the time singles are looked at as like the leper colony. and. Um, how do we kind of turn it around and not allow society to place those labels on us um, and feel like they, there's something missing um, in the midst of our singleness? Because I think singleness is a God-ordained season for our lives and it is where God is really molding us, where He can really use us. And um, we shouldn't just postpone our life until, you know, until we get into a relationship, until we are married. And so how can we live our best life now in our singleness? Um, not to say that when we're married, we won't live our best lives, but what does God expect from us now is really what I'm trying to say. So it really started off, um, a friend and, my, and myself have a ritual, almost like a tradition that we do whenever it's somebody's birthday. We really spend about a week or two praying to God and seeking God for a word for that person's life. And, um, I remember being in my late 20s and asking God, oh, my friend's been single for a while and what are you saying relationally? And I remember him speaking something to me that really changed my perspective. So the word in which he gave me was, wait until he has finished eating and drinking. Now, at that time I'd been part of a Bible study, so I knew exactly where this came from. It came from Ruth and where Ruth um, when Naomi had given Ruth a couple of instructions and part of those instructions were that she shouldn't wake up Boaz, she should wait till he finished eating and drinking. So she shouldn't make herself known to him until that time. So I knew God was saying to wait. And that wasn't really the best message I could give my friend being in her late 20s and still single, but I knew it was of God. And I think a lot of the times when we receive a waiting message from God, we focus more on the wait um, than on how we should wait. We focus more on the time frame. Okay, God, you're saying I'm, I need to wait, but how long is this wait going to be? Like, give me a time. One year, two years, like five years. Like, when is this thing going to happen? Um, and I think, I think that's actually where I want to start off today because I really feel that Although God does have a plan for you regarding relationships, regarding a husband or a wife, it's really more about where you are now than for where you're heading. And so God was sharing that with me. Okay, do not reveal yourself until he's finished eating and drinking. He's in a process, Shimon, you know, um, and for your friend, he's in a process. But I was not focusing on his process. I knew that, okay, you know, we shouldn't want something ahead of God's timing and try and organize our own flat plan here. I do not want to be an Abraham, um, you know, birthing an Ishmael because I know what that means. I don't want to be a, like a Jacob just making my own plan and then spend 20 years in Laban's house because I know that we can abort the plans of God if we rush into things. But I'm still asking God, okay, but what is how long <laughs> how long will this wait be how long does eating and drinking take um so i think for a long time i focus was on that for a while and um i didn't actually focus on the verses that came before that to be quite honest with you um so for those of you who'd like to go there it's ruth 3 3 so it's quite easy so i was really focused on part b not part a of the verse which really focuses on waiting 
to reveal yourself until he's finished eating and drinking. That was like, okay, how long is the wait? Instead of focusing on the now, Shimon, what do you do in the now? And um, part A speaks of four instructions that Naomi gives Ruth in how to wait. And that's really why we are going to focus today. How do we wait? Because I think um, not even looking at it as a waiting, I think, could possibly be key as well. Um, so how do we position ourselves in singleness? Um, to, to make sure we are whole when we meet that other person, just to make sure that we are our best selves, that ultimately a relationship built on two best individuals um, really is the grounds for God to do amazing things. And so I really hope for a relationship that God all his purposes into it. And I understand when I'm not obedient to what he's called me to now really um, delays that process and can really abort certain things. And so when I look at the first thing Ruth says to her, um, Naomi says to Ruth, is wash yourself. Um, so she says in Ruth 3 verse 3, so the first thing you should do Ruth is wash yourself. And we know in Ephesians 5, it talks about how do you wash the church? So the church is you and I, right? And Ephesians 5, Paul talks about washing um, with water through the word. And I think as single people, we have to spend time in the word of God. And even those of you who might be married and in relationships, the word of God is really uh, what, what builds you up as a person. Because when we are born again, we are, and I term this, I, I got this term from somebody called uh, Dr. Segi Gavinder, and he says, we're born blind. And I love that because it means that, yes, we are born again and our spirits are um, re rejuvenated and connected to God. But what about our souls? What about that place uh, where we make decisions, where our emotions lie, uh, where it is our will and our decision making? Um, that is not all of a sudden made perfect. That is process. That takes time. And it's really through the word of God, our engagement with the word, that we are refined into the ways of God. So there are a lot of things that are part of our lives that tend to be, to be not of God, whether they be emotional, whether they be mindsets that are not of Him. And so what happens when we listen to the word, we're really separating um, and removing things that are not of Him from our lives and really aligning to the position of Christ and to His ways. And that takes time. And I want to say, make sure as a single person that you are connecting with a family, a church family, that you are listening to the word of God, but not just listening. James speaks about being an effectual doer of the word. So we can hear the word, but if we're not putting it into practice in our lives, that's not benefiting us. And it's definitely not benefiting our future partners. Um, so we have an opportunity to be our best selves. And that's really the first thing is making sure you are engaged in the word of God. And that's going to take, if you are, are just newly saved, it's going to take you being part of a family, a church family. If you're not part of one, um, you know, contact the JREF offices and we can connect you with the church in your region, in your area, in your nation. And I think that's really something that you're going to have to make sure that you are a part of a community that really values the word of God because it's what we build our lives upon. There are various mindsets that we have from our upbringing. And because we've, we've been brought up with this particular way that we do things our whole lives, we can always lean upon that when that's actually not what we should be. We should be aligning to the principles of God and, and, and obeying that not really what, we, what we've been brought up doing. And a lot of the times that's hard, it's difficult to change a mindset, it's not easy. And so that is processing. And in our single selves, in our single time frame, in our lives, we have times to really buckle down in the word of God, have that time that we can in his word, in community, in life groups, in connect groups, um, to make sure that we are engaging in the word. And as I said, not just hearing the word, doing the word. And that's going to take sometimes dialogue with people, people that are like-minded, like you, and saying, well, how do I apply that to my life? 
and how do I become my best self now? Not waiting for one day to be somebody's wife or husband to be my best self, but how do I do that now? And how do I engage God's word and apply it to my life? And I'm telling you now that those principles in which you have in your life are really gonna be the thing that catapults your relationship to the next level and really sets you apart. We all really wanna see um, or we want to be a marriage of example um, in society and it's going to take us being built on the word and that's going to take time so use this time to do that um, and so she says wash yourself then the next thing she says is anoint yourself so W and then A anoint um, so a lot of you would understand what anoint means so in 1st John 2 20 it speaks but you have an anointing from the Holy One. So the anointing really speaks of the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Him. And we know that the Holy Spirit is a person. And I think in singleness, um, prayer can be molded. It's an amazing time to spend, to spend an amazing amount of time with God because you have that. And not to wait until you're married. I know a lot of people or I know I have a lot of single friends, I myself are single, so we're all waiting to pray with somebody else. But you can pray with your best friend or with a, a group from church. It doesn't make it any less than because you're not praying with your partner. I know that it's going to be an amazing thing that you can do one day. But what are you doing now? And I think ultimately um, out of this relationship that you're going to develop with God now um, is going to be the support, the bedrock really that's going to um, establish your your marriage later on i've spoken to many married people they themselves don't only pray with their spouses but also have a personal prayer time and um, really you don't you can't just wait to cultivate your prayer time when you marry but what are you doing now is what i ask are you whole in prayer now um, that ultimately when you pray with somebody at a later stage uh, when you are married one day or you do have a relationship that's just going to really just explode and blow up and and be an amazing time because we know how corporate prayer is just truly amazing when two like-minded people come together and pray something through on behalf of god but it really comes from an individual personal relationship time with God and use this time now to do that. So she says, wash yourself, talking about the word of God, right? Second, anoint yourself. How's your relationship with God? Are you waiting to be whole in that one day or are you doing it now? Um, and then thirdly, she says, put on your best garments. And it speaks of clothing. And I know we all want to put our best garments out and I understand um, physical physicality is important to single people and how you look, etc. But I think um, when you get to my age and um, those of you um, who are more mature, you realize really it's the heart posture of somebody that counts. I understand that, yes, the physical is important, but when the rubber meets the road, really it's character that's going to keep you um, and going to really... Um, be the thing where you can build a good relationship off of. And so the, in Colossians 3, Paul speaks about clothing, clothing yourself. And he actually says, clothe yourself with compassion. Clothe yourself with humility. Clothe yourself with kindness. So when we see clothing in the Bible, um, it really speaks of your inner self what is on the inside of you is your clothing and a lot of you would know that that when we see people we could see somebody beautiful on the outside and the minute they speak and they show us their nature and it's not really a good nature they instantly um, change in our perspective um, or the way in which we see them and so your clothing or the way in your character becomes extremely important and will really be the thing that's going to make sure that your relationship one day is going to be one of example. And so take this time to work on character. Take this time to work on the inside of you. And um, that is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. And another um, really description or interpretation of clothing in the Bible is function. I know my pastor always says, um, he uses this example a lot, if you have to see a policeman um, in the road dressed in 
his um, policeman uniform and he tells you to stop. You're not going to carry on uh, through that four-way stop. You're actually going to stop because his uniform tells you to do so. It doesn't matter if you have a bigger physique than that particular uh, policeman but just the fact that he's wearing a particular garment tells you his function tells you his command that he has and and so you listen to that and I think we all have a function we all have a calling in God and a lot of the times as single people I think we we wait until we get into a relationship in order for that calling to really come to the fore but I've noticed in my own life um, at one stage um, I was preaching a lot, I was young and um, really God was using me and a lot of people were offended not just because I was young but because I was female and I remember going to God and crying about it like why am I not married because you've given me this calling and I don't know how I'm going to use it without being married and for a long time uh, to be honest with you is that I stepped away from it until I came into a relationship. Well. I am still preaching, <laughs> well obviously I am not in a relationship and not married, but um, God had worked in me and said, well, you know what Shimon, this is where I've got you. And a lot of the time, society would put on you something that they've gone through, or something that um, God has brought them through and, and put that same thing on you. And I know some people are married at 22. and. I also had a plan to be married at 25, it didn't work out for me, um, but that wasn't in the plan for me because God wanted to do his work in me and it wasn't that he was waiting for me to be married to do that work. When you see Ruth, how did she meet Boaz? She was in the field when she met him. She wasn't waiting to get into the field until she met him. When you see Isaac, he was in the field when uh, Rebecca came riding on the camels. He wasn't waiting to get into the field for, um, for, um, until Rebecca came, then he would go out. So a lot of the time you would find this in the Bible, that you would find David. He was, he was going for Goliath before he met Michal. And a lot of relationships you will see that in the Bible, they didn't wait for a particular time. And I think we have to be obedient to God's calling on our lives and his timing and not our timing and not how we would wanted it to go or how others would have wanted it to go. And it is about him. So that is put on your best garments. Okay, and that's number three. So number four was the last thing that she said to Ruth before she said, wait until he's finished eating and drinking. She says number four, which is quite a difficult one for us, but I think it's one of the most important ones as single people. She says, go down to the threshing floor. Now, you know what go down means, humility. And it's key for us as singles because a lot of the time we can sometimes be offended a lot of the time when married people say certain things um, because sometimes you feel that they don't understand our period of singleness. Um, then we sometimes get into our own heads about how we feel that it should work out. And we need accountability. As singles it's extremely important one of the foundations to make sure that your single life will be whole is accountability to make sure that you um, are accountable to your pastor you're accountable to your connect group leader or your life group leader and I don't mean just sharing with um, your friends um, I mean somebody of higher spiritual rank than you are um, that knows deeper things, that have be, have, has been through uh, different experiences uh, then, um, and lived a life that they can ultimately um, guide you in the way. And I think a lot of the time um, that's something we need to work on if we're very real with ourselves is allowing others input into our lives. So she says, go down to the threshing floor. And when you just hear that word threshing, uh, it sounds like a thrashing. It sounds like a separation, which really it is. It's where they separate um, the grain from the shaft. So they take this winnowing fork. Um, after the animal is tread on the grain, they take this winnowing fork and they throw it up the grain and the shaft together into the air and the wind really blows the shaft away. 
and the, the heavier grain falls down to the ground. And that separation in our lives is never easy. Um, and a lot of the times, they call blind spots because we cannot see them, right? And we think we know our blind spots. We think we know our weaknesses. But sometimes they're so closely knit to our souls and it really, it's, it's a hard thing to separate. And it's not always easy to receive a hard word from somebody or a word of correction. We have to allow that process in our lives because um, when we allow that process, our best selves will come out of that. And really, what are we? We are single, but we are whole. And so these four processes are extremely important for us. I'll say them again, the first one being, she says, um, wash yourself. So how, how is the word of God in your life, I'd like to say right now? Are you whole in that aspect? Um, are, are you not just a hearer of the word, in it, but are you a doer of the word? Is it becoming practical? The second one being anoint yourself. How's your relationship with God? Are you, are you spending time with Him? Are you spending time in corporate prayer, in the individual prayer? Are you building up yourself um, in your spirit man? And then um, put on your best garments. Don't wait um, to one day step into purpose. If God has called you into that purpose now, then step into it now. And also character on the inside of you is what is sharpening, is what is forming. So put on your best garments. And then lastly, the threshing floor. Humility. Be subject to somebody else um, that is a spiritual leader over you and see how God refines and how he, he removes and how he restores certain things in your life. So that's it from me, a short video on just how we are single, but we are still whole. Uh, we are not less than. We do not have a gaping hole on the inside of us because we do not have a relationship. But we can live our best life now. So blessings, grace and peace to you. And uh, may you come into wholeness that ultimately when you are married one day, that your relationship will be that which is a standard of Christ. Bye from me.